How we doing today, YouTube? D-Ski from D-Ski Grills back with another cooking video. And today, we are hooking up 100 pieces of oak smoked chicken made on the Old Hickory Pits Ace MM. Let's go. <music> So folks, like I said at the beginning of the video, can't wait to get into this cook. So here's what we have today, folks. We have 100 pieces of chicken, maybe around 110 to be exact, but we have legs and thighs. And the idea today, folks, is to get these babies seasoned up. So we're gonna use the tubs and we're gonna get these things seasoned up. For our seasoning today, we'll be using the all queued up rockin' rooster. And I'm telling you folks, this cook is gonna be absolutely amazing. The Old Hickory Pits is getting fired up right now. So I'm actually putting the charcoal in. And then after that, folks, this thing's gonna get up to 250 degrees. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time and just show you the versatility and the awesome sheer capacity of the Old Hickory Pits. So what you can see is this thing has four racks, okay? They are, they are 26 and a half by 26 and a half. Okay, so think about the sheer capacity we're talking about. You have a huge firebox. This thing has a thermostat. It is a smoking machine. So you know what we'll do. I'll take it to the cutting board. I'll show you step by step how we're gonna season. I will show you how we're gonna get these things loaded on that old hickory pits. And before you know it, we'll be back at the cutting board checking out the final product of our 100 pieces of chicken made on the old hickory pits Ace MM. I wanna thank you as always for joining me and let's get cooking. All right, so we're at the cutting board and we're gonna go ahead and start cleaning our chicken first. So as you can see, all we're gonna do is start washing, okay? So we wanna wash our chicken. As we thoroughly wash each piece of chicken, we're just gonna add it in the tub, okay? So we're gonna do this for all uh, 100 pieces of chicken here. So I won't bore you with this, but this is the first process and that is making sure that your chicken is clean. Okay, folks, so we have all of the chicken cleaned and the next thing we're gonna do is use mustard as a binder, okay? So we're gonna add plenty of mustard to this chicken. And by doing so, this will not only act as a binder, but it does a really good job of helping with tenderization of the chicken as well. So I'm doing this here, putting a generous amount on the tops of all of these pieces. And then we'll just get in, get it all mixed up really good uh, to make sure each piece is coated well. So starting with the first tub, we're just gonna start smoothing this mustard out on all the pieces. And you see it coats really well once you get started and get it moving around. Okay, so this looks good. So we'll do the exact same thing to all of the other tubs. Get back with you in just a second when it's time to start doing the seasoning process. I'll see you in just a second. All right, folks, so all of our tubs have been mixed with the mustard, so we're good to go there. What we're gonna do now is start the seasoning process. So for seasoning, we're using the all queued up rockin' rooster. This stuff is just magnificent on chicken, all right? It's probably one of my favorite chicken rubs, uh, and we are going 100% heavy. I have an additional bottle. This one here is only like a quarter left of this bottle. So all of it's going in. We're going for some straight flavored chicken today, all right? So this is gone. We'll use our second container. And go ahead and make sure we get plenty of this rockin' rooster in there, okay? So we got it like that. I'm gonna go to the next tub and do the same thing. We're going with a heavy coat of that rockin' rooster. So you can see that the idea here is that you just put your mustard, your mustard ends up being that binder, it adds that tenderness and adds more flavor to the chicken. Then you come back with a heavy dose of your favorite rub. Me, it's Rock and Rooster, okay? I'm gonna go to the last one and do the exact same thing. And we will probably use this whole um, bottle. I have two more if I need it. I keep this stuff on deck. So we'll just keep on mixing this up until all of our pieces have even seasoning. Then we'll go outside. 
I'll meet you guys at the grill and we'll get these babies loaded up, add some oak wood, and it'll be time to start cooking these beautiful pieces of chicken. I'll meet you guys outside. All right, folks, so we are out here at the Old Hickory Pits Ace MM. Hopefully you can see on that dial, we are at around 240 degrees. So we are now at my favorite part of the video and that's let's get cooking. Folks, I'm all kind of excited. Let's get these babies added now. Okay, folks, so let's do an up close look at these 100 pieces of chicken. Then we're going to go ahead and add some oak wood to it. Let's do that now. Okay, so for the old Hickory Pits ACMM, we actually have this wonderful firebox. High capacity. It definitely holds a lot of charcoal. Lump charcoal is what I like to use. You see we still have quite a bit left. I use regular Kingsford to get this started because I want to save my lump charcoal for the true wood smoking part of it, okay? So that's what we got going on. I'll show you what else we have. So today we're using premium oak smoking chunks, okay? I bought these off Amazon. So first time using these, but we're definitely going to go ahead and get at least three or four of these added right now. Top that off with some more I'll do five. All right, nice size chunks already cleaned up. No bark on these, which I don't really care bark or not for me. All right, so we had that going. On top of that, we want to go ahead and add some more of our Fogo lump charcoal. This is the one I really love to use on this pit. I try to give everything a chance to catch before I shut it back down. So you can see we got everything that's lit getting angry, which we want. Grab these other ones that fell out and drop them back in. Okay, so that's what we have going on and it's easy enough to shut it down, right? So you have a tool for that and it's right here. All you do is go right on in, push that baby closed I clean up all of the ash that's right here so I can get a tight seal on my door. Okay, then you can shut your door down, close your ash catcher, and guess what? I'll see you guys in about two or three hours. All right, folks, we are back. We are two and a half hours into this cook. It is time now to add the first layer of cooking spray. Definitely want to start crisping up that skin. Let's see how this chicken's looking, okay? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get it opened up. I wanna get it sprayed, kinda get in and out of it as fast as I can. Definitely wanna make sure to uh, keep the temperature in, okay? So we are smoking really, really good. 
don't want to lose this awesome heat that we've already established inside of here. So let's get going. So we are rocking and rolling and we'll get back together in a few more hours and see how this chicken's coming along. See you guys in a bit. Okay folks, we're back. So what I want to show you now is how I vacuum seal uh, large portions of food for events. So I have an event coming up next week. So what I'm using is my uh, Western 3500 Pro, okay? This thing is an awesome vacuum sealer. What I want to show you is how I cut the bags really quick. Then we'll come back in a second, load up the chicken, seal the bag off, okay? So I have two bags already done. I'll do a third one with you really quick. So what you do is you have a blade right here that I'm opening up, and I go ahead and I pull the amount of sealant material out. Then you simply use the cutter, cut it across here, okay? And it comes out, all right? So there's your long piece. From there, you open up the device, and on the band here, this is the heating band, you add your material just above the band, close it down, and then hit the manual seal button right here, okay? So that engages, and in five seconds, you have the first seal of your bag done. Okay, hit release, open it up, and what you have is a double seal. That's what's so important. You wanna make sure to keep all the air out, and what we'll do in just a second, we'll bring the chicken in and we'll go ahead and finish up by loading the chicken in these bags and then we'll close this video out. I'll see you guys in a bit. So you saw me unloading that chicken. I know it looked just wonderful. Now let me show you the sealing process and we can close this video out. So what we're gonna do folks is go ahead, since we've sealed one side of the bag, we're just gonna open up the other side. These are really high capacity. So I'm gonna get tons of chicken in here and we're just gonna load our chicken in. And I may get 40, 50 pieces in here. At least that's the plan. Maybe not that many, maybe around 30, 30 pieces in. We'll just keep on loading, try to get this tray unloaded for the most part. This house smells amazing. It's beautiful oak smoke rolling. You can see the, the color of the chicken, like I said. You just have that beautiful brown color, not that really dark smoke. And it's all because we uh, spray the Pam spray. We make sure we have clean smoke, not dirty smoke. All those things matter uh, into your final product. Right, grab a few more of these legs. Just getting them on in here. So yeah, a week later we'll have a big event. Uh, this chicken's gonna be a hit. Plan on having uh, nine briskets as well. All right, and we'll go ahead and get a little bit more in here. We got plenty of room. I'm gonna do the whole tub. So I would say this is at least 40, 40, 50 pieces of chicken here. All right, so from here, all we're gonna do is open this baby up and we're gonna go right into our sealer. A 
line it up, folks, and we're gonna close that door on it, just like that. And we're just gonna hit the start button. So this high capacity sealer will suck all the air out. It does no more than just your regular ones. This is just more of a professional grade one. So I'm gonna let it go for a while and then I'm gonna stop it and start it again. It is automatically set up for 30 seconds, but I wanna suck the air out of here for at least 60 seconds, okay? So I'm gonna stop it. Start it again just to make sure we get the maximum seal out of it. See, it's all pulling in together. This is what you want, folks. Nice seal. Okay, now that the sealing process is happening, and then you'll hear it release, and it'll be done. All right, so here's what we got perfectly sealed chicken, ready to go right into the freezer, cooked fresh, and ready for the event next week. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe to my channel. Let everybody know what Deesky Grills is up to. And as always, at Deesky Grills, grilling is not a pastime, it's a passion. Thanks for hanging in there with me for this chicken cook. We got a chance to fire up that old hickory pits. We got a chance to do some high capacity cooking, and I really appreciate you all for joining me. I'll catch you on the next one.